Hi, and welcome back to the Jelvix channel. Today, we're exploring different types of processing units and their characteristics through real-world IT scenarios. We'll visit a virtual IT office to see which processors are used for specific tasks and why. By the end of this video, you'll know how to choose the best processor for any task. And make sure to watch until the end for a full breakdown of the top processing unit manufacturers. So, let's dive in. We are Jelvix, a software development partner for industry leaders. We post weekly videos on tech in five minutes. Don't forget to subscribe and use super thanks to support our channel. Let's start with CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit. They're the workhorses of general purpose computing, designed with versatility in mind and provide the right balance of power and efficiency. So zooming into our virtual office, we can see CPUs play a crucial role across various departments. Because of their versatility, they're perfect for roles that require broad task management and handling a wide variety of operations. This spans from the executive team to the IT department roles, product development team, HR, R&D, customer support, sales and marketing, and legal departments. Furthermore, various developers also depend on CPUs to write, test, and deploy code. Even such roles as DevOps engineers, data scientists, and cybersecurity officers, while commonly using other processing units, still leverage CPUs for some tasks. With that in mind, it becomes clear that CPUs are the most widely used across the company, with around 70% of our virtual office teams relying on them. Here's something to note. Since CPUs were the first to emerge as processing units, they are the most commonly used. Think of them as the foundation of the processing unit evolution, with more advanced models developed later to meet specific needs. So let's move on to the next stage of evolution, graphics processing units. Unlike CPUs that are optimized for single-threaded tasks, GPUs are specialized for parallel processing. As you can see, the CPU's architecture includes a few powerful cores with a layered cache for versatile, sequential tasks. Meanwhile, GPUs feature thousands of smaller cores in a grid optimized for parallel processing. This makes them ideal for tasks that require massive data parallelism, such as rendering high-quality graphics or running complex simulations. Given their strengths, GPUs are the go-to choice for roles like game development, 3D modeling, and video editing. Getting back to our virtual office, GPUs are particularly essential for several roles, including front-end developers, UX designers, and graphic content creators. Innovation engineers may also use GPUs when they are working on projects that require significant computational power, particularly for simulations or AI model development. Moving on, next on the list are tensor processing units. They're specifically optimized for machine learning workloads, offering high efficiency in training deep learning models and accelerating tensor flow operations. TPUs are particularly energy efficient when handling AI computations. With this in mind, TPUs are ideal for roles focused on machine learning and AI, such as data scientists, research scientists, and innovation engineers. These professionals use TPUs to train AI models, process large data sets, and perform advanced research. For any work scope beyond machine learning, TPUs won't prove themselves worthy. Another drawback is that TPUs are optimized for TensorFlow, limiting their use with other frameworks. They're also expensive and require specialized knowledge making them less accessible for smaller teams or projects. Moving on, let's explore DPUs, or data processing units. They are designed to handle data-centric tasks, such as networking, storage management, and security processing. In doing so, they're particularly effective at offloading data processing tasks from CPUs, which helps improve overall system efficiency, especially in data center operations. Looking at our virtual office, DPUs are primarily utilized in roles that focus on managing and optimizing data-centric operations. Network engineers use DPUs to enhance network performance by offloading data processing tasks, while DevOps engineers leverage them to manage high-throughput data workloads in CI-CD pipelines. In the cybersecurity domain, security analysts and penetration testers utilize DPUs to handle intensive security processes like encryption and intrusion detection and technical support engineers rely on DPUs for complex data processing and network troubleshooting. However, note this, implementing DPUs into existing IT infrastructure can be complex and require deep expertise. Last but not least, we have QPUs, known as quantum processing units. They're highly specialized for quantum computing tasks and excel in solving complex problems that are beyond the capabilities of classical computers. 
QPUs are the perfect choice for roles like quantum computing researchers, advanced algorithm developers, physicists, and data scientists in quantum computing. Viewing our virtual office, research scientists might be the only role who can efficiently leverage the potential of QPUs, particularly if they work on quantum simulations or cryptography projects. While it has the potential to be truly revolutionary in the future, it's crucial to note this field is still in its early stages. There are still many concerns and issues to be resolved, such as error rates and qubit stability, making this technology not yet production ready. Also, QPUs require specialized knowledge in quantum computing, making them inaccessible to most developers, expensive to develop and maintain, and often needing specialized environments like cryogenic systems. So here's the scoop. In this video, we've covered some of the most common processing units, but it's not an exhaustive list. For example, there's also neural processing units, specifically designed to speed up AI tasks in mobile and edge devices, vision processing units for image and video processing, and memory processing units designed for enhanced memory performance. There's also flexibility-oriented field programmable gate arrays, which can be reconfigurable for various tasks making them ideal for prototyping hardware designs or adapting to changing app requirements. Unlike them, application-specific integrated circuits are custom-built and optimized for one particular function at the highest efficiency, be it cryptocurrency mining or signal processing. With that being said, we hope we helped you shed some light on this topic. Have any additional questions? Drop them in the comments and let's kick off some extra insights. And as promised, Check out the comprehensive map of solutions and their manufacturers. Last but not least, please support us by liking it and leaving a comment. Also, check out our other videos, such as this one about low-code and no-code development. Bye-bye!